What is up guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a security analyst and college student. And this video is gonna be the next installment of our cybersecurity homeland project. So that's just gonna go over what we've done so far. Um, we've gone over you know the introduction to the project, going over the topology, the project scope, and then we've done uh, configuring PFSense, we've configured security onion, we configured Kali Linux, we did some interface um, interface and firewall rules on PFSense, and then most recently we configured a Windows server for our Active Directory environment. So what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be adding a user to that Active Directory environment. So uh, looking here, um, here at cyberworksacademy.com, if you head over to the resources section and scroll down to the labs, and here you're going to see building a cybersecurity home lab. Um, and then you know scroll all the way. I'm going to scroll all the way here, but yeah, if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see configuring Windows. 10 desktop it's just right before the last portion of the lab so as we're going to be doing we're going to be adding a user to the active directory domain so let's just hop right into it so i'm going to switch over to my pfs uh sorry to my v vmware screen so first thing i want to do here is head over to our kali linux machine um what i want to do is actually let me put this in full screen um yeah, so what we're gonna do in our, in our, in our Kali Linux machine, um, we, we, we're gonna access our PFSense interface. So let me just close this up and um, access it one moment. Okay, close it up. And then just go to 192. One, I'm gonna turn my number lock on. 192.168.1.1. Uh, and it will lead you to the sign in screen. So sign in. in the password all right so now we're signed in so what we want to do first thing we want to do is head over to services and then go over to DHCP server and over here we're going to be uh, going to our victim network and what we want to do is here in servers right we're gonna be adding an IP address, but before you do that, go over to your Windows Server 2019, um, the server you just configured in the last video, if you're following this so far, um, and sign in. Okay, so now, after signing in, go to your command prompt, now this should be easy, right? If you know the IP address of the machine, you don't have to do this, but just in case you forgot the IP address, so just do IP config. All right, so we see our IP address here is 192.168.2.10. So don't forget that. And then back at our Kali machine um, in our PSNs um, web conf configurator, we wanna add the IP address to DNS server right here. So. Once again, here in Victim Network, in under JCP Server from Services, go over to Victim Network, and then in DNS Servers, add one IP to the one two dot ten or whatever IP address your uh, domain controller has, and also based off of whatever uh, the domain name you configured for your domain controller from our previous video, you also want to add it as the domain name here in other options. So just to reiterate that once again, get the IP address from your domain controller, add it as the number one IP address as the, in, in the DNS server section and then add the domain name to the other options here in domain name so that's the first thing we want to do so once you've done that all, all of that is set and then next we want to do is of course start configuring our new Windows machine so create a new virtual machine click next and then of course you're gonna select the Windows 10 ISO and I'll leave a link to the download for the Windows 10 ISO in the description. So next, and we don't want, we don't need to worry about the Windows product key. So next, yes, and then I guess these two I already have one done, but I'm just going to clear that out. I'll uh, just put Windows 10, so it can differentiate. Next, next, and customize hardware. Now I want to add this to the VMNet3 
Network, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then uh, we just want to remove sound card, uh, remove the printer. And yeah, I think that's, we don't need those. And then close. Ensure that this power on this, this virtual machine after creation is not ticked. Then click finish. And it will create the virtual machine. All right, so it looks like our virtual machine has been created. So before we start it, we want to edit the virtual machine again and take out the floppy disk, remove, and then click OK. And then now we can power on the virtual machine. So get your fingers ready because we're going to have to click something immediately we start this virtual machine. So power on, OK, and then get ready to click. There we go. And this is installation is going to typically take a good amount of time, so you might uh, want to take a couple of breaks. Um, and then when we get to a certain point where I know it's going to take a lot of time, I'm just going to skip over to the next thing of the video so you can you can pause at those sections, but I'll let you know. So here, we're going to click Next, and then click Install Now, and then our setup will start configuring. All right, so uh, accept the license terms. Next. And custom install. Next. So this is going to take a uh, quite a bit of time. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to switch over to the next state of the video, but you can pause the video right here and then start it back up when your installation completes. So, I'll see you in the next stage. All right, so installation is complete. Um and then we're just going to click yes for United States. And then yes for our keyboard layout to be United States. Skip this. All right, so here we're gonna say domain join instead. And then uh, we're gonna give it a name. So because of the user we created previously, we're gonna say Tyrone Jackson. That's the user we created in our in our Active Directory environment previously. So next, actually, let's go back and we'll call him. Tyrone Jackson too, because there's another Tyrone Jackson um in the account that I created earlier on. So next, and of course we're gonna we don't want to create a overly complicated password, um just because we're in a lab environment. So okay, so here, what is your pet's name? Me. What is the name of your city or your bond? Me. And then what's your childhood nickname? Me. Cool. Next. And we're just going to untick all of this. Say no. Say no. Say no. Say no. No, no. No. And then accept. And then not now. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of time as well. And then we'll sk I'll skip over to the next stage of the configuration. So you can pause the video right here and then start the video back up when yours is ready. All right, so it looks like our machine has completed its configuration. Um, now, first thing I want to do actually is to install VMware tools so we're just gonna find our VM here okay there we go right click and then click on install VMware tools and then install and then we'll get an alert and then we'll click on that as soon as it pops up all right there we go so click on this and then click on this and yes. And the installation will start. Um, we're just going to click complete, next, next, install, and this is going to be it. So we're going to have like that full screen and the full entire VMware experience. So next, complete. Next, install. All right, so we'll click finish here. 
All right. And then after this, we have to restart the PC. So maybe back at after the restart, and then we'll continue the configuration. All right. So we're back here at the sign in screen. So we'll log in and then put a password in. All right, so first thing we want to do our first line of business is to change our PC name. So right here we search PC and then we go to view your PC name. And we have to rename this PC. So once again, alluding to the user, we're just going to say Tyrone Jackson 2. next and it's going to have to restart after this again so we'll restart and then we'll go into the next stage all right restart now and then maybe back after the restart all right so we're back at the sign in so we're going to sign in again now what we're going to do now is um change our network adapter settings so first thing we're going to do um essentially this is just part of joining the pc to the domain so we're gonna head over here where we have our internet settings, so network and internet settings. And for some reason it's saying it's connected. Um I find that kind of strange, but um okay. <laughs> so I want to change adapter options, uh, right click on this, properties, and go over to IPv4. Okay, so yeah, it's I, I find it really strange that it, it is connected, quote unquote. But here we're just gonna assign IP addresses to it. So we're gonna say use the following IP address and I'm gonna say 192. So I'm gonna say 192.168.2 because that's our network. And then I'll give it a dot 31 because I already have another one in the network. The default gateway is gonna be um, the interface that our uh to the one network terminates at so that's gonna be one to the one six eight dot two dot one so one to the one six eight dot two dot one and then our DNS server is gonna be the DNS server uh, the IP address of our domain controller. So if you remember uh, the previous address that we used back in our Kali Linux uh, machine when we we're uh, configuring this um, settings remember the DNS server so we're gonna add that to this I'm gonna say one I two dot one six eight excuse me one six eight dot two dot ten and then we'll click OK alright and click OK and our network settings are in so now for the final part we've all been waiting for what we want to do is to now join the domain so join so this device to the local active directory domain and our domain name is cyberworks.local next and there we go we are able to join the domain so we're going to use the username administrator and then password is going to be the password that we normally use uh, for all our accounts so whatever password you set and then we're just, we're just going to skip over this and then restart the server uh, restart the device so now that's essentially all that we needed to do to configure our uh, user machine, so our Windows 10 machine. And once this uh, machine has been restarted, we're going to go over to our Active Directory and look for that user um, in Active Directory us uh, users and computers. And we're going to see that user in um, our user, user Active Directory users and computers. So let's wait for it to restart. As a matter of fact, okay, let's just sign in. And while it while it's signing while it's while it's signing in, we can go over to our Windows server. And um, I already have this pinned, but let me just go to Tools, and then go to Active Directory Users and Computers. And then we're gonna look at computers here. And if you see right here, we have our Tyrone Jackson Two has been added to the computers here in our Active Directory Users and Computers. So once again, Tyrone Jackson Two Workstation or Server Operating System. Windows 10 enterprise evaluation. So that shows that our, our configuration is complete. Everything is working fine and we've successfully added the user 
to the Active Directory domain. Um, so I recommend taking a snapshot of your configuration. So take snapshot and then just limit like something like, uh, you know, baseline snapshot or something like that, and then take the snapshot. You know, because never know what might happen. So with all of that said and done, that is uh, right now the end of uh, this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to smash the like button and also subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. If you know anyone who this home lab is going to be of value to, please be sure to share it. Um, our next video is going to be uh, probably most likely working on building a sp our Splunk lab, which is going to be fun and exciting. So once again, thank you very much for this video and I will see you in the next video.